Ever wondered where your motors come from, where your props come from? If you're into FPV, chances are you've tried something from here. Today we've got exclusive access at the Emax factory and we're going to show you the whole lot. All right, let's do it. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here and today we're at the most advanced FPV factory on this planet, on this earth. We're at Emax, Emax HQ in Dongguan, mainland China. Cal and myself, we've got exclusive access. Now, if you're into FPV, surely you've heard of Emax. They make things like the motors, they make props, Tiny Hawks, so many products, everything is done in-house here. Now, we're gonna be going on a bit of a tour, but if you ever wondered how motors go together, what's the quality control like, how do they design new products, all that sort of stuff, we're gonna go on a tour. There is so much secret sauce that I can't wait to show you. We're gonna go meet Bob, the head of Emax, and we're gonna bring you along for the ride. So stay tuned, some really, really cool stuff. And if you've ever wondered where it comes from, how it's made, this is the video for you. And I guarantee you're gonna learn something. All right, let's do it. Here we are in the front foyer at Yin Yan. That's the parent company of Emax. We're gonna head through, talk to Bob, get a bit of a history, and then go on the tour. Radio. Yeah, let me let me start. Let me start. <laughs> Alrighty, this is Bob, the head of Emax, the CEO. Thank you so much for nice having to meet you. Sir. You too, you too. It's an absolute pleasure. I've been using Emax for a long time. It's what I started with, the original Nighthawk. That was my first ever FPV drone. How many people work at Emax now? And and how, how large is it? it seems to, it's, this place is huge, so I'm sure it's come a long way. Yeah, today I'm sure it's uh, uh, 300 and more people working uh -huh. with us. Did you ever think it would be so large? Uh, it's quite large. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, yeah. And, and how many motors, for those people at home, how many motors can you make a day at this factory? I, I have to see the, the peak for us is uh, uh, 20, uh, 20,000 per day. 20,000 motors 20, per day. Per All right, day. So, so that's a lot. You're amazing. <laughs> Actually, we are uh, the main OEM manufacturer around the world for the couple of the famous brand. So, but the brand I cannot see. Of course, you don't, have, you don't have to share those other people's yeah. details, but you are, you are making a lot of stuff in here. I can't wait, let's go do it. I wanna see all that exciting tech, how the motors are made, how they're put together, your own in-house testing equipment and the way the molds are made, all that sort of stuff. Let's go do it. Take you guys on a tour and see how it all comes together at Emax HQ Radio. So the first thing we're gonna look at, we're gonna go have a look at where the motors are actually designed, the team behind them that's putting them through the test, doing it all on the computer, the simulations, and then we'll head downstairs where the actual physical product gets made. All right, you know, in here, I don't wanna take up too much of these guys' time, but you can tell they've got a whole bunch of simulations. We were looking at some before. Uh, if we come around to this gentleman's desk, I don't know if I'm gonna to have to blur out some of these specs, but they can run all these sorts of tests down here that sort of they can change the variables on there and they pretty much make a computer model before they take it out and design the real thing. So before you see any motor, before it's all gone through this process, they would have designed one first on the computer, run it through the simulations to find out exactly the motor they want for their customer. And then from here, I think we go into this room and this is where they build some by hand. Now in this room, this is where things get made by hand. So before we go downstairs, it's a huge automated process, a really, really big plant. Once they've come up with the design there, they think that works, they put it in here, they do some testing, they document it all, there's all these, all these files and everything's documented. So if there is a problem, they can come back, work on it here before it goes into full scale production. So this is all the design part. Now the interesting stuff, we're gonna go downstairs, have a look at how they're lasered, the magnets, the windings, all that sort of stuff. So we'll go check that out next. I should say as well, it's, there's a lot of floors to this factory. So we're going up, we're going down, we're on the middle level right there, we're gonna go downstairs. This is also, Emacs is really known for quality control. So we watched a whole slideshow about how they put things together, their whole process from the, from the first product and everything is made in house, which means they can control everything which is kind of why Emax has such a good record for quality control as well, because they control the whole process. Now we get a bit of a sneak peek at that in this room. So here's where all the raw materials come in. So if when you're making something for your motors, all your plastics, it all comes into this room and then it all gets checked. They've got a whole checking room. So uh, you can see here, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not gonna do all the translations on here, but they've got a whole flow chart on how they actually check the quality and making sure the components they have are correct. And then in here, they're going through, checking them all as well. So boy, that, that part, that's not as interesting. Where we, what we do have is in this room, we've put the key code in. We're gonna go in, see some of the magic, 
And uh, behind these doors, this is where some really cool stuff happens. Now, one of the secrets of Emacs is that they use lean production, which means they don't start manufacturing until they've got their order. So there's not big piles of stock anywhere, but as soon as the order comes in, they fire this up. We're gonna go up and have a look at some other stations upstairs as well. But right here, we've got all these stations set up and every single one is designed to do a different task. They've got a whole bunch of testing equipment that I wanna show you. So over here, I think we're checking something, some internal resistance on the motor, measuring the noise and all that sort of stuff. Maybe I can see if, can, would you be able to fire this up for us and okay. we can have a bit of a squiz? All right, so doing a little bit of a testing, usually the door is shut as well, so you can get some more accurate readings and that should probably boot up soon. Do some hocus pocus magic. And there's these testing machines the whole way through here. So there is a heap of testing that's done. I think over here we had some cool stuff where they were putting some magnets inside motors. But that's a bit of a rundown of this room. What we should do, let's head over to the CNC machine room. We'll have a look at some of the molds. I know a lot of people want to see the Tiny Hawk. How we make a Tiny Hawk, the props, the big presses, some really cool stuff as well. So we'll head over there. Now this room, I'm going to have to speak up a little bit. It's quite loud in here. We've got some molds over that side. We've got a whole bunch of CNC machines. So we're going to go have a look at what they're making. I think they're making motor bells or something. I know this guy, he's checking some quality control, so making sure that what comes out is what they've specified for. And this whole, this whole floor is full of these things. They're absolutely everywhere. I don't know if you can see, see some of this. This is kind of what they're making down here. I'm not too sure what this motor is or where, it, where it's going to go on, but they go through the whole lot. Check the quality control over here. That's what this gentleman's doing. He's testing all the variables and a really cool part. What we're gonna do, gonna head over to the other side of the factory because that's where I've never seen plastic getting pressed before. So they're making things like the Tiny Hawk mold, uh, the Tiny Hawk die, we're gonna see that. We've got the propellers, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So we head over that side. Now, if you've ever wondered how do they make those Tiny Hawk frames, something like this. If you've ever wondered how do they actually make propellers, that's done in this section. So they get a big mold like this and they squirt some hot plastic in there. It presses together and out pops something like this. So uh, a really, really cool process. These things are super expensive to make. But once you've done that, you can make the same product. You can pump them out unit after unit after unit. So we'll have a look. I know they're making some, I think they're the three inch, uh, the three inch propellers. They're over there. So we'll have a look at those machines. Right here, so here, right here, this, this machine at the moment, it's got the Tiny Hawk props in there. So we'll have a look and I don't know how much we can see, but it's gonna spit something out just in a second. This guy's obviously inspecting something. <coughs> I don't know, oh, maybe I'll grab the camera, I'll, I'll see if I can get right in there. Just grabbing some plastic in there. And then out the bottom, We've got a gentleman inspecting it. Now I think they're making maybe some Avans over this side as well. Uh, what do we got? I'm not too sure. Ah, and here's a whole bunch of plastic. This is what's sort of left over. So every single propeller, that's what's left over there. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if this one's on at the moment. Not in production. So they're making a whole bunch. They're also doing a lot of work for gimbals and other things. But overall, I think this one's just getting turned on right now actually. Oh yeah, here we go. This is what I, this is actually still hot. So it's still hot from the press. Come check this out. <laughs> I'll grab this. So in here, they're pressing the plastic in there right now. I don't know how much of that you can actually see in there. And then this machine, that's gonna grab the sort of pull it up and the plastic prop should come out here. That's the plan. that bit out. Alrighty, so I bet you one of these, yeah that one is quite hot, so feel that cow. Warm that is the, the freshest prop on the planet. Can't get any fresher than that. Smells good. <laughs> This is the thing that the plastic is injected to. This is the tooling workshop where they're coming up with all these things. This 
is really, really expensive to make one of these. So I'm gonna make sure I don't drop it. Even though it's heavy, this is the A-Van, one of the five inch A-Vans, and they do all that work in here. So they build everything in house. So anyway, let's go have a look upstairs, maybe check out some of the way motors are wound or ba balance the propeller. There's so much stuff to show you guys. So we'll go, I'm gonna put this down, we'll go check that out. This is the part I'm excited about. Upstairs, where the action happens, where you take the products and they turn into drones that we're more familiar with. What we're, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go for a little bit of a tour. We've got a bunch of different machines over here. So and over this way, this is where they're sort of, they're pressing the motor belt down together. So if we head over here. Oh, the guy's gone. Well, when we're looking at this before, essentially it takes the top of your motor, presses it together with the bottom, it gets it ready to rock and roll. That goes through that process. Now, something I found quite interesting was the motor windings. I've never seen that before. I know some, you know, they used to be wound by hand, all that sort of stuff, but down the back, we're gonna go past some products and then we're gonna have a look at some motor windings getting done. You can see, Look at all those tiny hawks over there getting made, ready to fly. I can't wait to test out some more of those. Those things are a lot of fun. And then another part that looks pretty special. I'm hoping, I don't know if this video will be out by this time, but uh, these bad boys, the tiny hawk remotes for the bike, the ready to fly is actually, that part's pretty cool. We've got some really big motors here. Look at the size of that, mate. That's huge. <laughs> so, I don't want to get it out of order though. I don't want to uh, muck it, any, anything up. But right here, this is uh, where they're winding all the motors, putting all the wire on, doing its thing. We've got these really cool little spools. And I wish I knew the science of these things, but I don't. I'm sure somebody can put it in the comments down below anyway. But another, well, So once the motor comes from here, what we should do, we're going to head over to that side of the factory because that's where they've got the motor balancing. So we'll check out the motor balancing in three, two, one. We're in this room, this is pretty specialized. What we've got, we've got these gentlemen here. Every single motor, it's sort of balanced with this little bit of glue that gets pressed onto the bottom. And we've got some testing equipment up here. So this gentleman, he puts on the new bell, he reads the readings on the screen, and I'm going to see if I can get some of that in focus. And then that tells him how much glue he needs to put on there and where to put it. So, highly specialized. I imagine it takes a long time to know exactly how it works. We've got the left side and the right side, but every single motor here goes through that process. So, Cal, what have we got down here? Oh, just some motor bells getting ready to be balanced, I'd say. And then they get, once the glue's on there, they get checked again, made sure they're passed, and then uh, that's it. The motor is getting close to completion. Something that's been really popular, I know for a lot of people, is the Tiny Hawk. So they start, we've got the PDB here that's getting a few little extra touches on it, putting it in the base harness, and then as we move along the production line, we're putting it into the top canopy right here. It's clipping in all the little, I don't know what you call those, the little standoffs, all that sort of stuff. This lady starts to put it together and every single process is documented. We've got all these procedures and manuals up here so people know exactly what they're doing. And as we get closer and closer down the production line, you can see it's starting to look more and more like the finished drone that we're used to seeing in our boxes, doing a bit of binding. Every single one is checked. And then if we head right down the end, each one of these is ready to go. And there's a little testing rig over there. You can see they give it a quick little hover, make sure that there's no defects or anything like that. So they know that every single drone they ship out, it works and the customer's gonna have a good time with. We've got some Hawk 5s over here actually as well. So this part, it's probably much the same story. I'm not sure where they're up to in production. There's a whole bunch over here as well. So uh, that's probably going through the same sort of process. Rightio, so there it is. There's my factory tour. What did you guys think? Massive shout out to Bob at Emacs. We had an absolute blast here. I've learned a ton. Hopefully you guys have learned a ton as well. Drop your comments down below. What else do you want to see? What kind of crazy stuff? Did you know how these motors went together? There is so much stuff here. I could make videos for hours, but we're going to cut it short here. Other than that, subscribe for more FPV related Emacs factory tour related action. And as always, happy flying.